Welcome to Scratch 3.0. In this course, you're going to learn how to navigate and code in Scratch and how to integrate that into your classroom. To get started, we first need to join Scratch. If you've never created an account in Scratch, you need to do that now. To do that, you just need to click the Join Scratch button and you need to follow all of the instructions to completing the Scratch login. Once you've created your account, please go to your email and confirm that account so that way later in this course you'll be able to share your projects with us. Once you have created and confirmed your account, please sign in. Until then, please hit pause and then start it back up when you're ready. Great, now that you're in and have a Scratch account, I'd like to take you on a little tour of Scratch 3.0. If you've ever used Scratch in the past, Scratch 2.0 or even Scratch 1.0, you'll notice that things look uh, similar, but Scratch 3.0, they've really made quite a few new changes. One of the biggest changes to Scratch 3.0 is that it now works on tablets and phones. Now, I don't recommend using it on a phone. It seems to be a little cumbersome and, and hard to use, but it does work on tablets because it's using HTML5 instead of using Flash. I prefer to still use it on a computer or a Chromebook, but again, it will work on tablets. So, to start that tour, I'm going to click on the Create button, and that's going to load up my new screen and you'll see right away that everything looks very intuitive, easy to find, everything makes sense, and that's one of the new changes as well, that everything just seems to be placed in a really nice location. Let's start with this blue header bar. So the Scratch icon will take you to Scratch, the page that we just left. Next, the world changes your language, so if you do have a student who has English as a second language, they could actually use this in their language. If you look, there is a great deal of different languages to offer. Next is the file, and this is where you can click New if you want to make a new program. You can actually use the Save Now or Save as a Copy to do that. Um, I use the Save Now frequently because I like to make sure that it saves before I quit. It does save for you, but it doesn't always save right away, so you want to make sure you hit save now. You can actually save the file onto your computer, which is kind of interesting, and then you can also load one from your computer. So if you want to keep a file on your computer, you can do that. I prefer just to keep it online because it's always there, and if I switch computers, it's wherever I'm at. Next is the edit. The edit has restore if you've made some mistakes and then turbo mode. Turbo mode will speed things up. This is especially helpful when you have a really long program and you're testing something toward the end and you want to kind of speed through and get through to the end. That's really helpful. Then you have the, the tutorial link. This used to be on the side, and it has a lot of cool tutorials, so feel free to look at some of those as you're working through this course. Now, we do have the name section where we can name our file, so I'm going to name mine my first project. You'll see you have the share button. It's orange right now because I haven't shared it yet. When you click share, it makes it available for anyone in the Scratch community to see. You do need to do that if you want to share your projects. All you have to do is then share the URL right here and I can see it when I click on that or whoever else uh, you send that to can actually see it. If you don't hit the share and you send us a link, we won't be able to see it. The C project page, that's just like the instructions or the, you know, the first page you come to, instructions and credits and 
you can still run the project from here, but it's nice because you can tell people this is how you use it, this is how it works. If you have some keyboard controls, you could tell that. You could also give credit to people who have helped you. Of course, there is the see inside section right here. And coming over further, you will see the My Stuff folder. So this is the folder where all of your programs will be online. And then you have your name where you can get to your profile and settings and things like that. Also important, especially when working with students, to remind them to sign out so that way the next person coming on to the computer at school doesn't get into their Scratch account. So let's move on. Now I have this section over here on the left. It has code, costumes, and sounds. Let's talk about the code first. You'll see that we have a number of different sections of codes. These are very similar to what Scratch used to have. And again, if you've used Scratch, you'll notice there's some things missing, but I'm going to show you where some of those things are. The other things that I noticed that are not there anywhere really wasn't something that was used, so I think it just kind of went away. What I like is I can scroll through these all the way through and keep going if I'm looking for something. So I can kind of browse through every section. Now, one thing that I love in addition to the new Scratch is down here in the extension section, there is this new text speech. So before, you basically had to have your sprites say something with a speech bubble. Well, that was fun and that was cute, but this new text-to-speech allows it to say it out loud, and that is really awesome. The music used to just be on the, the sound section, and the pen used to be its own section. So you can actually click on those and get some new, uh, some new scripts, some new code. But you'll also find some other things. You'll notice that you have the Lego Mindstorms for the EV3. Now, I particularly don't like the blocks that come with this. I don't think it does nearly as much as the Lego software does. But if you have an EV3 and you have some really young kids, I think Scratch would be really great with them. The Microbit, I have not tried, but I've seen some really cool projects. The WeDo, I haven't done. But again, I think it would work real well with WeDo because that's younger kids. And the Boost, I haven't done. Now, the Makey Makey, I have done, but I never had to use an extension. So what I'll notice here is these are just some extra things to help you out. But you really could use the Makey Makey without having that extension. But I'm going to click the text-to-speech section because I like that I can say something. I can change the voice. And by the way, the kitten just goes meow, 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 which is really annoying. So my students are not allowed to use meow. And then you can actually set the language. Now, let me tell you, when you set this language, what you're really doing is setting an accent. It's not really changing the language, okay? If you want to say something in Spanish, you're going to have to tell it language of Spanish and actually write it in Spanish. So the word has to be spelled out in Spanish. Okay, enough about the code. The costumes, this is where we can see the different costumes for each of our sprites. And we can edit them, we can do whatever we want, change the colors, but we can also make our own sprites, our own costumes from scratch right here. Okay, Sounds, that allows us to pick new sounds, or we can edit sounds, we can record our own sound. So this is a little, a little audio editor right here. So you'll notice you get three different things depending upon what you click on. Okay, let's move over here to this middle section. When we're on the code, this middle section is our workspace. This is where we drag our code over. So if I want something like pull the when the flag is clicked, I leave it there. If I do go to a costume or a sound, that's fine. When I come back, the code is still there. Now, the workspace goes with whatever sprite or backdrop you've selected. So right now, you see that I'm on this this cat sprite, the scratch cat. But if I click on the white background, notice there's no block. Okay? So whatever sprite I'm on, that's where the workspace shows up. So if you have multiple sprites and you click, you're on 
one, but you've put script on another, you might wonder where it went to. Well, that's where it went to. It's on that sprite, and it shows you the sprite right up here. As you build, you can make this this bigger if you can't see it, or as you get a lot, you can make it smaller, and it will scroll, so you, will, you do actually have quite a bit of room for your workspace. Okay, let's move on. Stage right here, this is where all the magic happens. So whatever you script, you code, the sounds you make, the costumes you put in, when you play, it all shows up right here. So this is like your little video screen. So the stage is where the magic happens. This is where you can play it. This is how you stop it. The flag plays it. The stop sign stops it. And you can make it full screen. I particularly like it just to stay like it is. But you can make it a little bit smaller if you want. I find it hard to see that. So I like to leave it just on this middle one. Right below the the stage area is where our sprites our sprites go. We can name our sprite. This one's called Sprite 1. So if I wanted to call it Scratch Cat, I could do that. That's especially helpful if you have multiple multiple uh, sprites that are the same thing and you want to just name each one. And I can tell it, like, it's right now, it's at 0, 0. This is a coordinate grid, so it's at 0, 0. I can hide it or show it, size, the direction it's facing. They all face 90 degrees, which is right. And we'll talk about that more in another in another lesson. And so if I want to get more, I just kind of scroll over here and I can choose one. And you'll see that you have lots of choices. And while I'm here, I want to show you that if you just mouse over it, it will actually show you the different costumes. Okay. Now, if you do this and it doesn't have any costumes, well, then it doesn't. It just has the one. But it shows you what the different costumes are if there's more than one. You can actually paint your own, like I said. If I click on that, it will take me to the costume section. You can get surprised, and that just picks one for you. And then you can upload a sprite, and that's basically just uploading a picture from the internet. Okay. If you want to get rid of one, you just click the X right in the corner there. Let's move on to let's move on to the backdrops. So the backdrops are the backgrounds that we have. It starts with the white one and again you can pick a backdrop, you can paint your own backdrop, or you can upload a picture and some of my students actually like to do this. I think uploading the picture works a lot better with backdrops because it's going to fill this whole screen. And when you do that, if students are getting something that's really wide, it won't have it won't all show up because notice this is more like a 4x3 um, standard aspect ratio and so if they have a widescreen type of picture it may not look the greatest um, but again you can be surprised and you can upload something but those are the backdrops when you do click on the backdrops notice that the motion blocks are not available that's because the backdrop can't move but you can do everything else to the backdrop but it just isn't going to move around if you want something that kind of shakes in the backdrop to make it look like it's you know, there's an earthquake or something, you'd want to make a sprite that is as large as the background. So, if you want to do something like that. Lastly, there's this thing called the backpack. Now, most people miss the backpack down here, but the backpack is incredibly useful. A lot of times people will say, you know, I made this really cool set of code for, for this one project, and I want to use it on another project. Well, you can do that. If you click your backpack, if you stick that code down in here that shows up on any project that you're creating so as you as you get into anything new make sure you're in the same username um, that will show up and that way you can use code over and over again if you're just using code from one sprite to another it's pretty easy you just would take it and drag it to the next sprite whatever sprite you have over there so that is a really quick tour of Scratch 3.0. Please share your username with me and we will get on to some other lessons learning how to use Scratch and also how to incorporate it into our classroom.